Also coming up next here at six. Going on strike. Dozens of Cal State faculty trading their pencils for picket signs. The first of a series of walkouts all across the Cal State system. Plus, new car owners beware. You may have to pay to keep those fancy features. And an 18-month long search leads to a tragic discovery for a missing Madera County woman. The new details we're learning in the case of Wendy Pullins and a possible motive for the man accused of killing her. From Eyewitness News, this is Breaking News. And we begin with some breaking news out of southwest Bakersfield tonight where a person has been killed in a deadly crash. According to the CHP website, the crash happened just around 5 on Ash Road near the Kaiser Permanente Soccer Complex. They say a motorcyclist crashed into a forklift and lost control. This is, of course, a developing story. We'll be bringing you any new information as we learn it. You can check for those updates on air or online at bakersfieldnow.com. Well, now at sick, detectives in Mariposa County believe they've now recovered the body of a missing woman. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rochelle Murcia. And I'm Michael Patterson. Wendy Pullins was last seen in June of last year. Family members say she had gone to the DMV, but they didn't hear back from her. While one man has now been charged in her killing, reporter Liz Gonzalez from our sister station in Fresno spoke with Mariposa County leaders who said that there could be even more arrests in the case. An 18-month-long search for missing Madera County woman Wendy Polins came to an end this week in Mariposa County. Sheriff's Office located evidence and human remains that we believe to be Wendy Polins. As horrific and unimaginable as this case details, our law enforcement professionals are true heroes. Mariposa County Sheriff Jeremy Breeze said Friday that Polins had gone to Mariposa to the DMV for a matter involving her red Jeep. She told family members she was staying in Mariposa that night with a friend. But at one point, Bree says she crossed paths with her friend's neighbor, Justin Bolton. And detectives say Bolton believed Pullins had something to do with his brother's killing. He made a decision, and he made a decision to physically assault Wendy. Mr. Bolton continued to beat her until she was deceased. They say Bolton then placed Pullins' body in her own Jeep, dumping it near Mid Pines and later ditching the vehicle. Bree says other people later found that Jeep, drove it away, and even painted it green, but later ditched it too. Detectives wiretapped people who they believed were involved and eventually zeroed in on Bolton. And once he learned they were on his trail, they say he and his friends began to craft an escape plan. He was taken into custody November 13th, and detectives felt they had enough evidence to charge him with murder, even though they hadn't found a body. But now that they've recovered what they believe to be Pullen's remains, they say it solidifies their case while giving Poland's family some peace of mind. While this case has been long, our team's focus never wavered, and that was to find Wendy and arrest those who are involved in her disappearance and eventual murder. And that was Liz Gonzalez reporting. We now know the name of a man who died days after a shooting in Wasco. He's been identified as 34-year-old Michael Prendez Gonzalez of Bakersfield. He was shot on November 29th on Iris Street. The KCSO says they found Prendez suffering multiple gunshot wounds and was taken to the hospital but later died over the weekend. Investigators are still trying to figure out a cause of death. And we have the sky full of uh, high clouds today, made for a pretty nice sunset here. You can see those high clouds as they're kind of... Uh, uh, moving on through, they're about ready to move out to the east. We're going to see clearing skies later on tonight. Here's what it looked like just a few minutes ago as the sun was setting in the southwest and we had a beautiful sunset. Uh, temperatures right now continue to slowly go down in Bakersfield at this hour. We're down into the 50s, 57 degrees with 57% humidity and an AQI in the 50s too. The fives are wild. Northwest winds at uh, 3 miles per hour. 59 in uh, Bakersfield, 57 in Arvin, where the big Arvin Christmas parade begins at 7 o'clock in less than an hour from now, so make sure you get out and see that. Temperatures up in the mountains in the 50s as well. The 50s everywhere, as you can see. Up to the north, we're going to be looking at some uh, fog, uh, dense fog advisory issued from 2 a.m. until 11 a.m., but north of Kern County, although I do think we will see some fog in the outlying areas in the South Valley as well. Temperature right now, 57 degrees, 57 percent humidity. We've already gone over that. And 30 percent humidity up in the uh, Tehachapi area. Temperatures tonight will drop uh, through the 50s to the 40s, so there will be some fog in the outlying area. should not be widespread. 
In the uh, Kern Mountains, temperatures in the 40s drop into the 30s with decreasing clouds. And in the uh, Kern River Valley, 50s this evening down to around 45 by Tuesday morning with uh, mostly sunny skies tomorrow. Pretty nice day coming up tomorrow and really nice on Wednesday before big changes the next day. We'll talk more about it in a few minutes. Michael, back to you. Thank you, Miles. Looking to the Southland now, faculty members walked out of their classrooms this morning and spent the day walking the streets outside campus. As reporter Michelle Julie from our affiliate in L.A. tells us, they're upset over their current salaries and want wage increases as well as other benefits. Cal State University faculty members met at Cal Poly Pomona on day one of the strike. We're going to say it again and again today, the classrooms are empty. The campus is empty. Lecturers, professors, librarians, counselors, and coaches have walked off the job and onto the picket line. 29,000 members of the California Faculty Association are demanding better pay, manageable workloads, and a full semester of parental leave. Because I remember when I had, what, 20 days with my first baby, which wasn't enough for my first child. And I remember trying to express milk in a bathroom because there were no lactation spaces. So for me, this is a struggle for the people that are coming after me. Faculty members want a 12% raise this year. CSU is proposing 5% each year for the next three years. At the last time we negotiated, they offered 4% and came through with three in the end. Uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not going to sit around and take a, a potential 5% raise over the next couple of years. You ready to fight? Team Sturs, Team Sturs. The CSU chancellor has made an offer on parental leave, but it's not as much as faculty is asking for. We agree with many of the recommendations that were offered, including increasing paid parental leave to an eight-week period. Um, it currently, is, um, it currently it is six. This is a four-day faculty strike. Tomorrow, it will move to Cal State San Francisco. On Wednesday, Cal State LA, and it will end up Thursday at Sacramento State. On the campus of Cal Poly Pomona, Michelle Geely, KCAL News. Well, meanwhile, the shops at Santa Anita Mall in Arcadia was hit by a group of smash-and-grab robbers. It happened yesterday afternoon at the shopping center. The Arcadia police say that four men entered the rebag store and used hammers to smash open several glass display cases. They then stole numerous purses and watches before taking off. Police are still looking for those suspects. Well, coming up here on Eyewitness News at 6. New car owners, beware. You may have to pay to keep those fancy features. We'll tell you about it.